Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and on today's Real Life Friday video, I'm posing the question, how clean is your house? So, back a super long time ago, there used to be this show on Lifetime and it was called How Clean Is Your House? And it was these two British English ladies. One is named Kim and the other is Aggie. And I used to watch this show religiously. It was like a hoarder's show, but for really messy people. Oh, look, it gives way. Oh, it was a bathroom. Aggie, this is absolutely horrendous. And so Kim and Abby would go into their house and they would help them clean it. And it just so happens the popularity of that Lifetime show made them come out with a book. I bought it a long ass time ago. A long time ago. I don't think this show has been on Lifetime in a million years. I can't even tell you if this book is even still available. I can try to find it on the Amazons and if I do I can link it down below if you're interested. But it is Kim Woodburn and Aggie McKenzie, How Clean Is Your House? And it has hundreds of handy tips to make your home sparkle. I haven't even referred to this book in a million years, but they do have some pretty interesting tips. And I feel like since spring is in the air, even though it's still freezing, spring is in the air. And you know what that means? It's spring cleaning time. So I figured maybe we all take a look around, see how clean our house is, and see if we need to do anything to enter in the spring. So, first off, I mean, these ladies are darling. Darling. It tells you a little bit about Aggie. It tells you a little bit about Kim. And then you go right in to a quiz. And I thought we should probably take this quiz. It's the Are You a Filth Offender? It says, you might wonder exactly how clean we're all supposed to be. Surely no one can live up to our exacting standards. You're certain you're not as filthy as the mucky people we visit on the show. Oh, look, look, it's all old. But perhaps you've got the odd nook you'd rather we didn't poke our fingers into on a surprise visit. So it says, before you read this book, we think you should discover if you're a filth offender. So. I say we all take this quiz together. 10 questions, all right? Get a piece of paper and get a pen. No one's gonna feel bad about themselves after taking this quiz. We might discover that we are completely filth offenders and we might discover that we're not. And if we're not, we could just close this book and go sit down and watch some TV because our house is perfect. So let's start with question one. It says, which of the following statements best describes your approach to cleaning? There's A, B, C, and D. You're gonna need to mark down A, if you do a little each day is the best way. B, I do it when it starts to slip. C, I don't really have time. Or D, it's something other people do. Now, for me, I'm gonna mark B. I do not clean my house a little each day, even though I know that's what you should do to stay up on things, but I don't do that. I do it when it starts to slip. So I'm gonna mark B. Next question, when is vacuuming best done? So I'm torn because I definitely vacuum when I'm expecting visitors. Like I bust that vacuum out and I vacuum the entire house before someone's gonna come over. I wanna say once a week, but I know that I technically don't vacuum exactly once a week. I mean, I have hardwood floors, so I find myself sweeping more often than not. So if we're being specific and we're just saying vacuuming, I guess only when I'm expecting visitors, I'll be honest, it's that's what it is. Now, if the question was sweeping, I probably do sweep once a week, but that wasn't the question. How often do you do the dishes? This is another one. I mean, I left two bowls, 
some spoons, an ice cream cup, and a glass in the sink. And the one bowl has been there since last night. The other bowl has been in there since probably two nights ago. The ice cream scoop last night, because I ate ice cream, and the glass, I don't even know when that got there. I definitely don't do it every day. There's like four things in my sink. So I guess I'll mark when the sink starts to overflow with dirty dishes. However, I don't think that this is exactly true, but I'll mark it. How frequently do you change slash wash the cloth you wipe kitchen surfaces with? So I'm gonna mark once a week because I do change out my little tea towels that I have or whatever towel I have on my stove handle and I also change my sponge out the minute I see any grime on it. So I do that quite often. When was the last time you defrosted the freezer? Never in my life, which makes me feel like I have a frost-free model. I mean, there's no ice. So I'm gonna mark A. Let's just mark A. Quentin Crisp famously said that dust doesn't get worse after four years. I am going to say dusting is definitely not therapeutic, but a quick flick around with the duster never hurts because I do dust quite often. I just don't like the look of dust on things. It just takes away the shine. Next question. Who's been sleeping in bed with you? Dust mites love dirty sheets. How often do you wash yours? Okay, this is where it can get a little disgusting. <sighs> I definitely don't wash my sheets once a week because I barely do laundry once a week. Once every two weeks, plausible, but probably not. So I'm gonna say once a month, which sounds really disgusting when especially the question says dust mites love dirty sheets. I'm sure my sheets are pretty, pretty dirty. Me and Joe sleep in there. I should probably wash them more than once a month. It just depends. I get a wild hair and sometimes I'll be washing everything and then other times I'm like, eh, it's fine. So I don't know, I'm marked C, sorry. It's, it's gross, I, I can admit it, it's gross. Getting back to normal after a big party involves, well, as of late, it is people rarely come to visit anymore. But remember, I used to be the party gal always had a party at my house. And I will tell you this, the only thing I would do the night of the party, like once everyone left and it's like one or two in the morning, I would put all of the food away in the refrigerator because A, wasteful, I wasn't gonna leave food out all night long. And B, no one wants to wake up to a smell, like all the food smells. But as far as the rest of the house is concerned, I always said, oh, oh, hell no, fuck this. I will do it in the morning. So. I'm gonna say, I enjoy myself and worry about it in the morning. That's what I do, that's B. All right, next question. How clean is your toilet? I pride myself on how clean my toilets are. Pride myself. I'm Mark A, I'm serious. You go into either bathroom right now, toilets, mwah. It used to be a joke with me and Davis at the old house because he basically had all of the upstairs. He had his own bathroom his own bedroom, the loft, and then what we called his office or playroom when he was a little kid. I never really walked up the stairs. How he kept that upstairs was his business. If he wanted to live like a pig, he could live like a pig. So anytime we were having guests or throwing a party or whatever, I would always tell him, you need to clean your upstairs. And he would come down saying his bathroom was clean. And so every time it was always, is it clean enough that if one of our friends, Kristen, I always use Kristen, don't ask me why. Is it clean enough that if Kristen were on her hands and knees puking into your toilet that she wouldn't get disgusted? And he would always tell me, yes, yes, yes. I'd go up and check and I'd look and I'd be like, Davis, this toilet is gonna give me HPV. <laughs> we know that that's not what happens, but that was our little thing. Like if I looked at the toilet and said I was gonna get HPV, he knew that he had to go back and clean it again. I am very strict about how clean my toilets are. Nothing else in my house might be that clean, but my toilet's amazing. Last question. When visitors are calling, do you, A, do nothing, everything is already spotless, B, throw the vacuum around quickly, C, apologize in advance for the mess, or D, C, answer D, left. Oh, answer D to the left is people rarely come to visit anymore. I usually do nothing because I try to keep my house pretty clean, but I will 100% vacuum. 
if there's time before they come over. So all of our questions are answered. Now let's go over the results. So if you had mostly A's, which I did not, you are a cleaning queen. Aggie and Kim are pleased with you. You're great. You could probably just turn off this video and go watch some TV because you're amazing and your house is spotless. If you had mostly B's, it's never any fun being average, is it? Who wants to be the middle of the road? Go on, dear. Try and better yourself. Do I have mostly B's? I have mostly B's. I mean, Kim and Aggie said I could do better. So that's what we'll be doing. I'll be doing better today. If you have mostly C's, it's a slippery slope for you, my dear. A dirty, grimy home is nothing to be proud of. Any more filth and your bed sheets will be walking themselves to the washing machine for a good soak. Okay. Now, if you have mostly D's, no judgment. No judgment. So if you have mostly D's, you are sadly a filth offender. You're filthy. It's not clever. So wipe that smirk off your face. If you don't mend your ways, you won't see your next birthday living in that hole. <laughs> okay. Well, now we know what we are. So now we can fix it. They do go over, it's actually a really good book. They do go over their whole getting started, what they suggest you should have as far as cleaning products are concerned, and they kind of go through what those items are good for when cleaning. And then they go over like some gross stuff, which kind of does make you want to clean your house a little bit. Pests that can happen from not cleaning, dust mites and all that good stuff, flies, rodents, it's kind of grody, pantry pests, textile mites. These are all little critters that could be living in our house and we don't even really know it because we haven't cleaned in a while. So yeah, we want to avoid that. Do a little each day. So that is their kind of mantra. It says, some people cannot relax until every last chore is done. Others can't seem to get started or don't know where to start. We're making a lot of excuses for ourselves about why we don't have time around the home. And I think I do find myself doing that. Like even before starting this video, I was like, mm, do I really want to clean my house right now? Maybe I could go outside and like do something with the yard or maybe I could just lay on the couch and watch more YouTube videos or play on my phone. I constantly make excuses for cleaning, constantly. So yeah, I feel them. So they say that we should tidy as we go. A quick flick here and there with a duster. Don't let it build up. You make life easy or you make life hard and we know which we prefer. Keep on top of the laundry, restore order in the kitchen after every meal, a quick run around the center of each room with a vacuum and you'll be keeping a lovely, happy home. If others don't or won't help, don't scream and give yourself a headache. If they want to wallow in their own dirt, let them. Mm-hmm. And that was a habit I fell into when I was married and living in the bigger house. I would find myself sounding like a broken record about cleaning the dishes in the sink, picking up after themselves. One thing about living alone is I have no one to scream at but myself. So I don't scream at myself. I just say, Sherry, you're a fucking pig. Clean up a little bit. Then the book goes into what we should be doing as far as daily, weekly, and monthly routines. And then what we need to do as far as spring and they say autumn cleaning. So what I thought we would do today is go over some of the daily routines and then they actually have huge sections on individual rooms in your house. This many pages is dedicated to the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen and I thought, well, maybe we could do like one hard thing in the kitchen, but I wanted to take a look at the daily, weekly, monthly situation because I don't clean daily, but maybe we should start getting in the habit. So let's look at what they say we should do on a daily basis. If you try to do the following little tasks every day, they will soon become second nature and you won't even notice you're doing them. I find that hard to believe. I know for 100% certain, I will notice if I'm cleaning 
rather than laying on my couch watching TV. I'm gonna notice, but okay, Kim and Aggie, whatever you say. A couple of minutes here and a few seconds there, and you'll soon wonder what all the fuss was about. So, every day, we're supposed to pull back the bed covers to air out while you shower and have breakfast. So this is something we're supposed to do in the morning, like before we are going to work. It says, open the window. This will reduce humidity and limit the number of dust mites. All right, everybody, let's go pull back our bed covers and open a window, except for I don't want to open a window because it's freezing outside and I have my heater on, but I guess I will do that. So I'm gonna go down the hall to the bedroom to do that. You go do that too. Okay, I pulled back my bed covers and I opened a window even though it's fucking freezing outside. Keep the kitchen clean and tidy. Wash up after each meal and keep surfaces clean. Change dish cloths and tea towels daily? Oh no, not daily. This is where I disagree. This is where I disagree. I mean, I have had these sitting here probably longer than a week, actually. So we'll throw them in the laundry room, okay? We did that. Now I'm supposed to wash up after every meal. So let's do that. So that's done. Did you guys, did you guys tidy up? It says now number four in our daily routines, we're supposed to vacuum or sweep the kitchen floor. We're supposed to keep sinks clean and hand towels fresh. All right, I gotta, we gotta sweep, we gotta sweep or vacuum just our kitchen floor, no other floors. So I'll sweep. Okay, sweeping done. Keep sinks clean and hand towels fresh. So we need to clean the sink. Mind you, we're still on what we're supposed to do every day. Okay. Now I'm sure they mean all sinks, your kitchen sink, and your bathroom sinks. So do that every day. Also, I don't use my same dish sponge to clean my sinks. I use an old grimy sponge and then when this sponge gets too grimy, I make my kitchen sponge the grimy sponge and then I get a new sponge. So, got my grimy sponge. We're gonna clean this sink and then I'm gonna run into my bathrooms and clean those as well because that's what we're supposed to do every day. Okay. Sink, clean, guest bathroom sink clean, my bathroom sink clean. Okay, we are supposed to keep the toilets scrumptiously clean. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I do pride myself on a clean toilet. My toilets should be very, very clean, but I will go in and give them a quick wipe down. Again, this is stuff we're supposed to be doing every day. Mm. All right, everybody, let's go wipe down our toilets. Okay, so here's the guest bathroom toilet. Um, I'd say it's pretty clean, but I will wipe it down. Let me get my products out from under my sink. I use this. Well, actually I use whatever cleaning product I purchased at the Dollar Tree. It's mold and mildew stain remover, but I feel like it has bleach in it. I use it in the toilet. Now, what some people might get grossed out about is I have no problem sticking my hand in that toilet. I put some comment in the bowl, I roll up my sleeves, I get my sponge. This is how I am able to avoid getting a water ring around the bowl. I think a water ring just makes your toilet bowl look really dirty when it isn't that dirty. It's just that hard water ring where the water sits. That's how I avoid getting the ring. I stick my hand in this toilet and I scrub Rub it with the rough part of the sponge. Now initially it did have, I know we're not supposed to be getting into this, but I'm gonna tell you anyways. Initially it did have a water ring around it. So to get that off, I use a pumice stone. When I do see a little hint of a line forming, I'll get the pumice stone out and then just like pumice that line right off if it doesn't come off with my sponge. Yeah. I'm telling you, my toilets are clean. If there's nothing else clean in my house, the toilets will be clean. Ain't nobody getting HPV in my house, that's for show. Once I have the toilet bowl cleaned out and I've sprayed my cleaner on everything else, I just take a paper towel and I wipe everything down. Everything. 
And really, if you keep your toilets pretty clean, you really don't have to do much else but wipe them down and clean the inside every now and again. Make sure you get back here, wipe all this, the top, and then also don't forget down here. This is where I find just dust and makes your toilet look much dirtier than it is. So one toilet down and I gotta go do mine. Okay. Ah, that was six things we've done in our daily routines. There are two more left to go. We are supposed to return things to their place so clutter doesn't build up. That is one thing I can tell you. I don't have a lot of clutter. I do have some clutter in the sunroom. I didn't clean up my mess from my last DIY, which was the iron on t-shirt situation. I guess I better go clean up that clutter because that's only clutter. Oh, I do have another piece of clutter. I have an unpacked suitcase in my office. So let's go pick up our clutter. Here's my clutter area from stuff I didn't clean up. I just shoved it in the corner because if you can't see it, it doesn't really exist now, does it? <laughs> so let's clean this up. I have some stuff to put away. I do have like a box of Valentine candies in the family room and some flowers that need to be thrown out. Again, I don't really keep a very cluttered house because even if your house is entirely clean, you scrubbed your floors, you vacuum, you clean your toilets, you clean out your sink, you do all the things you're supposed to do, but if you leave clutter lying around, it kind of negates all that hard work you did of like mopping, sweeping, scrubbing toilets and sinks. You know, sometimes it does get away from me, like here. There's that. Just, you know, just the shit from a DIY. Okay, so yay, clutter's cleaned up but now I notice this floor is really dirty. But we don't have to worry about the floor in our daily tasks. We were only told to sweep our kitchen. So the cleaning of this floor is going to wait because I do have clutter in the office that I need to take care of. As we make our way back to the office, you can see clutter freed up this room. This area never has clutter in it unless I'm doing a DIY. Kitchen, clutter free. Hallway, no clutter, but office. Oops, what's that? A suitcase that's been sitting there for um, a couple weeks, yep. And then that's my pull bag, so I gotta clean up that stuff. All the clutter is picked up. Our last daily routine is to consider nominating days for laundry. Saturday for bed linen, Monday for towels, Tuesdays for colored clothing, Thursdays for whites. That's doing laundry every single day. I cannot get behind that. I will pick today to do all of my laundry and then not have to do it for the rest of the week. I guess that would make more sense if you had a really big household and laundry would pile up if you let it go for more than a week. I can't get behind that. I can't get behind that daily task. There's no way I'm doing laundry every single day. I'm, I'm sorry, Kim and Aggie, I can't get behind it. I cannot get behind changing out my dish towel every day. That seems like a waste to me. I don't even use that dish towel except for to dry my hands. I don't dry countertops with it, nothing. And occasionally it acts as a pot holder when I need to get stuff out of the oven. And I'm certainly, certainly, I am certainly not doing laundry Sunday through Thursday. That's not gonna happen. So do you guys disagree with these daily tasks? or would you be willing to do at least six of the eight of them? I'm thinking the bed linen thing, I don't know, cause now I gotta go remake my bed, but actually like making sure the sink is clean, the dishes are put in the dishwasher or put away, wiping down the toilet, wiping out the other sinks and picking up clutter. While I'm not gonna get up early and do that every morning, I could see myself I was gonna lie and say I could see myself doing that every evening when I get home from work, but no, I can't see myself doing it every evening when I get home from work because Mondays and Thursdays I go to poll so I don't get home until like 8.30 or nine. Ain't nobody doing six tasks at nine o'clock at night. But Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, I could do those daily tasks. And I do believe that if we stayed up on the daily tasks, it would make cleaning overall a lot easier. It's just getting in the habit of doing these six to eight little things every single day. So let's just read over what they want us to do every week. Maybe we'll do some, maybe we won't. Of course, there are some jobs you don't need to do every day, 
That doesn't mean you have to save them all up for a mammoth cleaning blitz at the end of the week. Now that is something I do, which I wanna try to break the habit of. I do go ham when I'm cleaning and it takes me a long time. What I'm hoping is by doing the daily tasks almost every day, maybe doing the weekly tasks, it will make my like overall cleaning job much easier. Oh, we're supposed to change the bed linens twice weekly in hot weather. I just gotta get on the stick and do it once every week. That I don't do. I'll, I'll, fine, I'm a pig, I'm a slob. I don't change my bed linens every week, but maybe now I'll get in the habit of it. Maybe we make Sunday, change your bed linens day. I'm supposed to change my bath and shower towels one to three times weekly. That is another thing I don't really do. Definitely not three times weekly, I'll tell you that right now. I did just change out my shower bath towel, but that was, I feel like that was like a couple of days ago. Okay, so fine, I'll change it out again. We're supposed to vacuum weekly, wash and mop all hard floors, dust the surfaces. It says if we're pressed for time, dusting will always Wait, dust doesn't smell, but toilets always do. We're supposed to wipe fingerprints from door handles, light switches. It only takes a second to keep germs away. We're supposed to thoroughly clean the bathroom, toilet sink, shower, tiles, toothbrush holders, mirrors, and floor. This is a lot to do once a week. Attend to the areas of the kitchen not covered by daily routines. Wipe cupboard doors, backsplashes, oven, microwave, fridge, windows, and rinse and disinfect the trash can. And then we're supposed to iron our laundry. Uh, I don't know if I can get behind all this. Okay, let's, let's see. Okay, I'll change the bed linen. I feel like, okay, so I feel like my house is pretty clean. Like if I just look at it. But now reading these weekly tasks, it's like, maybe it's not that clean. Are you guys kind of getting that impression of your own house? Because seriously, every week, it, okay, so here's my, <laughs> it's like, how clean is your house, Sherry? Well, not that clean, because I refuse to do all of these tasks. But here's the thing, I'm gonna justify, I'm making an excuse, too bad, I don't care. The guest bathroom, no one fucking uses. Now that Davis doesn't live here anymore, the only time that bathroom gets used is if John comes over and he needs to use the bathroom or I'm doing a skincare video in it. And usually I just clean up my mess after my skincare video. I know the shower's clean. To clean an already clean bathroom seems a little like a waste of time. Changing the bed linen, ah, such a pain in the ass. I hate remaking my bed. Um, changing the shower towels, okay, fine, I'll do that. We can definitely vacuum. But here's the thing, their weekly routine is like cleaning your entire house, top to bottom. Dare we look at what they want us to do monthly? Oh my gosh, okay, monthly routines. You guys ready for this? Oh, hell no. The very first one is clean windows inside and out. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Once a month? Are you insane? Pat, have you ever cleaned the windows? Uh, about 14 years ago. I maybe do that once every six months, but really my version of cleaning the outside is I just take a hose to all my outside windows and I just hose them down. I think I've maybe cleaned the inside windows twice since I've moved here and it's been two years. Okay, it looks like I'm admitting to myself more and more I am a filthy pig. We're supposed to launder under bedding, mattress covers, and pillow protectors. Oh, turn the mattresses. That is my dreaded thing. My mattress is hell's a fucking old. I need to save up money and get a new mattress. But because it's so old, it is so heavy and it's like loosey goosey so i do try to do it i definitely don't do it every other month that's for fuck sure we're supposed to sort through cupboards and drawers regularly discarding things we don't use vacuum areas we normally neglect like under the bed curtains, cobwebs, and high corners, clean lamps and lampshades, polish wooden furniture, polish mirrors, including frames, wax floors after, no, no, no. Thoroughly clean inside and out of oven, dust blinds, door tops, and picture rails. I'm sorry guys, I don't like any of those chores and I don't want to do them. I know that we're supposed to do them. And I know these blinds in particular in this kitchen are dusty because I can see it. And I do need to dust them. Oh, 
All right, spring cleaning. That's really what we were supposed to get down to business doing. So let's talk about it. Spring cleaning and autumn cleaning. You know, it sounds old fashioned, but many people still spring clean. In the old days, they used to wash everything. Yes, everything. Empty all drawers and cupboards, pull out all furniture, take down all curtains, wash all floors and rubs, and scrub down the paintwork. As the days lengthen, the windows get open and the sun streams in, we start to see dust and dirt that has been hiding all winter. So give your home a treat. We're supposed to wash all blankets, duvets, and pillows, change seasonal clothing in wardrobes, and pack away clothes that I don't use. Well, I don't have that much storage, so my closet holds all of my clothes for winter, summer, spring, fall. So I was just in my closet when I was cleaning up my suitcase, and I do need to go through my closet and get rid of some stuff because it's getting kind of tight in there, especially from our sustainable thrifted wardrobe. I bought a lot of pieces and I didn't remove any pieces. I just shoved those all in my closet, so I should probably go through that. Vacuum books, CDs, videos, and shelves. Clean underneath heavy furniture and electrical appliances, shampoo, carpets, and upholstery, launder or dry clean curtains and bed covers, discard items or appliances that are broken or no longer in use, inspect garages, basement, lofts, and sheds, and freshen up these areas for the summer. I don't want to do it. Deep cleaning if we're starting from scratch. I don't want to go over this list, but... Let's do it. All right, so let's pretend we scored really bad on the quiz. We've never been cleaning our house and now we're turning over a new leaf and we want to be really, really, really clean. So if we were starting from scratch, they say, if you do it little and often, your home will never get out of control. That is true, I firmly believe that. But I also believe that there are some times where I'd rather just give myself a fucking break and not clean my house. Sorry, that's how I feel. However, there are times when you may find yourself inheriting someone else's dirt. That's true. I inherited a lot of dirt when I moved into this house and I probably, while I feel like I've cleaned a lot of it, there's probably still, even after two years, spots like that are probably not my dirt. Start at the top of the house and work down. I mean, do they mean like the top, like the ceilings? Clean top and bottom of every room. Bedroom studies and reception rooms first. That's like all the rooms. So your bedroom, your office, and then like your family room, li living room. I'm assuming that's what they mean by reception rooms where like guests would congregate. That's all the rooms in my house. Ceilings, walls, curtain floors. Pull out all furniture and appliances and clean behind and underneath. Wet first. Washing, paintwork, windows, laundering, and shampooing. Dry next. Dusting, polishing, and waxing. Vacuuming last. Removing all traces of dust and debris. These rooms last. Bathroom, kitchen, and utility rooms. As you clean through the home, you will be replenishing your buckets, cloths, dusters, and mops as you remove dirt from elsewhere. So save these rooms until last. That makes sense. Finally, attack the porch, hallways, garage, cellar, and loft. That's a lot of fucking cleaning, man. That's a lot of cleaning. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Now I'm remembering why I haven't cracked this book open because it's making me feel bad about how I'm not really that clean. Awesome. All right. So, yeah. There's clearly a lot of stuff in this book that I do not do on a regular basis. The daily routines, like I mentioned, I'll try to get in the habit of doing them not every day. Definitely not Mondays and Thursdays. Maybe Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. The weekly cleaning, I think that we can get a handle on that. So let's do some weekly cleaning, everybody. It's time to change our bed linens, change our bath towels, vacuum, mop, wipe the fingerprints off the handles and light switches, clean the bathroom, and clean the kitchen. All right, I'm gonna start a load of laundry, dishwasher, sweep, vacuum, mop, clean the bathrooms, remake my bed, dust, and then we'll be done. It's 12.39. Let's bust through this cleaning and then we could rest the rest of the weekend.
First load of laundry is in the washing machine. Dishwasher is started. Now I'm going to dust everything, sweep and vacuum. You do the same. All right, weekly tasks are done. I have changed the bed linens. My first load of laundry just finished. I do need to put that in the dryer. My dishes are done. I do need to put those away. I have changed my bath and shower towels. I have vacuumed all the carpets and the floors. I have mopped all my floors. I have dusted my surfaces. Oh, I didn't wipe fingerprints from door handles and light switches. I'm just not gonna do that. I didn't thoroughly clean the bathrooms, like I didn't clean my shower tile, but the sinks, mirrors, floors, all that jazz, clean. I did wipe down my kitchen, mopped, I swept my pantry, I emptied all my trash. I do wanna go in and like straighten up my garage, but for the most part, daily and weekly cleaning done, according to Kim and Aggie. So I was reading through this book and they do have tips and tricks about how to clean any sort of thing in your house from your oven to your microwave to your toilet to your washing machine. It's all in here. I was coming across the bathroom stuff. Kim and Aggie say they don't like a toilet brush. I think I own one, but I never use it because as you saw, I don't mind getting my hands in the toilet. In my mind, my toilet's clean. If you flush the toilet, that's clean water. It's not like I'm sticking my hand in poop and pee. But they say that toilet brushes are unhygienic because they collect feces and often left to sit unwashed in a festering container of bacteria-fueled water. If that doesn't make you wanna throw away your toilet brush and just use your hands, I don't know what will. So, there you have it and there it is. We just figured out how clean our house was according to Kim and Aggie. I thought my house was pretty clean, but lo and behold, it's not nearly as clean as these two ladies would like it to be. I did spend about an hour and a half doing the vacuuming, the mopping, the wiping down of surfaces, what have you, which in the grand scheme of things is not that big of a deal. Now that doesn't include the daily tasks that we hurried up and did as far as like cleaning our sinks, wiping our toilets. But I guess what I wanna know from you guys is, do these ladies daily, weekly, monthly tasks seem a little unrealistic? Or do you think that you can do them? Would you start doing daily tasks, weekly tasks, as per what we went over in this book? I'd be curious to know. I'd also be curious to know how clean you think your house is. According, of course, to Kim and Aggie. Not according to me, because clearly, I thought my house was clean before we began, and boy, was I wrong. In the comments below, let me know if you were wrong as well. I am gonna do my best. I mean, living by myself, like I mentioned in my Living Alone video, it is pretty easy to keep my house fairly clean. But what I don't do, regular daily tasks. My weekly tasks are a little hit and miss like every other week, but I might wanna think about trying to stay on top of the cleaning of the sinks, ugh, the changing of my bed linens, things like that just to make my weekly slash monthly tasks a little bit easier. I mean, I my mom, I'll tell you what, it has stuck with me forever. She always said, if you keep your house clean, you never have to worry about an unexpected guest coming over. Whoever shows up, whenever they show up, if you know about it, if you don't know about it, you won't be embarrassed by them coming over and walking into your messy house. So the daily tasks do make sense in that regard. Again, I don't have a lot of people coming over these days, but it is nice to walk in to a freshly cleaned house every time I come home from work. And by freshly cleaned, I just mean that it was cleaned and there's not a lot of shit around. There's not a lot of stuff on the counter. The sink is cleaned out. So yeah, I think that I might put 
some, not all, I'm being realistic, not all of Kim and Aggie's cleaning tips to the test. Yeah, I think this was pretty helpful and I am gonna try to stay on top of it. And if you guys would like me to go through in another video, if you're having issues with like some of their tasks that they say like how to clean the toilet, how to clean the microwave, how to clean your oven, how to clean your washing machine, how to clean your fridge. If you want me to do stuff like that from this book, I will be more than happy to show you what these two ladies think is clean. So let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the Real Life Friday videos I push out, which is every other Friday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends, especially those friends who may not be the cleanest. Maybe this video will help them out. So be sure to share it with them. And as always, thanks for hanging out.